Right, I've climbed up the zigzag path quite a long way. Just stopped to have a drink of water, take my jumper off. It's quite warm. It's sheltered in the wood, mind. I mean, when I first got out of the van this morning, it was very breezy, cold. I even put my hat on and scarf. And it is still chilly. You get out of that sun, you can feel the chill. But we're gradually walking around. A bit like, you know, any old castle with a mound. You're going round it to get up. Berry Castle, it's called. But it um, also refers to the hill fort. What I forgot to get when I was in the garage earlier, buy a sandwich. But I've got a tin of pilchards and a tin of fruit in the van. Crisps, chocolate, Kit Kats. So I don't think I'll starve. I've got stuff in my bag, snacky stuff. Cheeselets, a Kit Kat, orange. I don't like eating when I'm doing anything strenuous so It just gives me indigestion. Someone didn't shut properly. Maybe. Alright, we'll just have a quick look in the instructions. A minute. Over note for a minute. Gone again. I take it I've just got to go. Don't forget I'm doing it reverse. Everyone else has got a pink arrow to follow. I'm doing it the other way and it looks like it hits you like that. So I presume I carry on up here. And that other big mound over there is coming into view now and we're getting as high as it on this side of the Selworthy Coombe. We're getting as high as that. Yes, the zigzagging is continuing. We made the right decision, Sheila. We're getting higher and higher. and higher. It's lovely, isn't it? All these beautiful trees. I mean, it's, it feels like a landscape garden. How the zigzag path has been carved out, which was common to use. The Edgecombe Estate down in Cornwall near Millbrook and that. Um, that's got a uh, huge garden. Mount Edgecombe with lots of follies in it. That's what happened in the 17th and 18th centuries when the gentry started going abroad for their holidays, trading abroad more, travelling more, like France, Italy, Spain. You know, they, they travelled a lot and they came across these other cultures with beautiful architecture. And they started to bring it back to England. I mean, we weren't quite in mud huts. Because, I mean, look at William the Conqueror lot. They built massive castles. They, the Tudors built lovely Tudor homes. Um, but it was something classical, Italian style. And Greek, you know, I mean, oh, ancient architects in the art world. They tried to bring some back and they would devote the whole of their land, the English, to build these fine decor decorant houses and um, like I say with follies, little, little temples in the wood or all that sort of thing. So they're still a lot of it preserved when you go and visit places like Sturton House there's another place that's got little bridges 
um, statues and stuff like that. Right, we're getting very close to the top now. Where I should be able to see more features apparently once I'm up here of a castle-like structure. Let's hope they've got a couple plaques. Looks like something over there. Um, yeah, I can see some ridges. It's just like um, when you go up Western Woods, uh, the hill fort there, every now and again they prune everything and cut back all the thistles and brambles so that you can see the underground underlying foundations of what was once castles and hill forts. And that's what we've got here. They've cut back the shrubbery so we can see the humps and bumps. I mean, they haven't, they've started to put a couple little notices up on the hill fort in Weston, mainly to warn people to stop damaging the ancient hill fort. There's a thousand pound fine, I think, for move, moving the stones about too much. I think some people don't do it with the intent of causing damage. They do it to bring back a bit of history by piling up a car or something. Or building a little round shelter. I'm going to go over to that over there before I follow round. Because look, this looks like you can walk right round it. But I'm going to go up there first. I just want to climb up on that ridge there. There's different entrances. That looks like an entrance to a hill fort there with a bank to either side. There's posts leading round as well. Right, over and out for a minute. I'll take some photos. Right, well, I've just taken a lot of photographs of the Hillfort features here. There's a plaque there saying um, Ancient Bury Castle there. I think that's what it says on that one. Let's have another look. Iron Age, yes. Bury Castle, Iron Age Fort. So though it was called a castle, it was a... It might have had a castle as well up here, but it was also before that an Iron Age Fort, and it's probably been here in the Neolithic times and before that. I'm going to walk right round it again. And all down there you've got different combs and pathways that will um, take you back, which is behind me where I've got to go where Alberta is, but I'm going to survey the whole of this bit. So this is Berry Castle Hill Fort, Iron Age Hill Fort. And what a commanding position it's got as well. You know what I mean? It's uh, All this probably would have been dwelling places and markets and stuff. Those straw huts that they had, and they're keeping the animals in. Um, strongly defended, it would have had uh, wooden barricades, um, whatever there's a name for it all. Um, I can't remember everything, but um, you know, they would have had fencing, wooden fencing. Like I said, there, there will be other pathways coming off here. Um, I'm not going to go down too far, I'm just going round it really, to get an idea of its, its size. I'm just wondering whether Henry VIII planted all these oak trees, because I don't think, I don't know whether they would have been here. Um, that was a thing with Henry VIII, wasn't it, to build his ships. But look, you can see all the features, the, the, the ditches and um, and things. I'm not an archaeologist, so I don't know all the right terms. I haven't seen any pits yet, but there probably are. I mean, on Western Woods, you've got these um, grain pits. And... Uh, and it could be that, who knows if that was one or whether that was a gatepost there. Um, so we'll just walk up through here. So 
So a little bit of history everyone, a little bit of geology, geography, ecology, ancestry, <laughs> right over there, Dunkery Beacon, where there's probably another tribe, the biggest tribe would have been over there I reckon, the biggest tribe, they were the leaders keeping an eye on maybe this or maybe they had both here and there but there could be grain pits who knows it's nice to do another fort um, it wasn't really till I came to Porlock and I started studying the literature that I realised I probably knew that there would be a lot of stuff, you know, I would have known that. But when it's not on your doorstep, although it is really, I'm still living in Somerset, but it's a big county, I can't just like walk up like in my own hill fort, it's just five minutes away, you know, I actually live at, at the base of it, so I'm right on it. And, uh, I said, so even in the 21st century, people are living by the hill forts. Not on top of them so much, because they're protected now. You wouldn't want a skyscraper or a McDonald's up here, would you? Some people would, though. They'd love to have an ice cream van up here. And all the different ramparts. That was the word I was looking for, ramparts. Different ways of making the enemy work. Now, you know, I've just walked through a zigzag path, but whether that was created by the Acklands when they shaped their gardens, I don't know. Um, but even if it was a thousand, six thousand years ago, we will all struggle to get uphill to go and fight somebody. But, of course, the other thing was sieges. So you'd have to have a source of water and be able to get to it as well, wouldn't they? As they could be hemmed in and starved to death up there. <sighs> Certainly is beautiful, though, isn't it? So, folks, those follow who are following me, this is a little bit extra for the Porlock stuff <sighs> that I'm going to put on before I even start with the contact stuff that I've done recently. So here we go. We just climb up to the very top, which is up here. We just climb up here, look. Anyone over there on Be Selworthy Bacon, Beacon, who've got a good camera like I have, will be able to see me on here now. I'm the king, I'm the queen of the castle. Here we are. And down through there, where those trees are. That's where Alberta will be the other side of those. There's a road I have to follow halfway along that hill over there. Um, which is a beautiful little travel actually. But if you come up here around a dog, you can just walk all around this bit and go back to your van without having to climb up no hills. I mean, just look at it. The autumn colours. It's beautiful, isn't it? But there's a lot more Exor for me to explore, but I'm going to have to go off camping in the van. Um, fit, I've got to fit in a long weekend doing a bit more over there. Um, deeper into Exmoor. I need to go deeper. But that'll be a trip away. But like I said, there's no point saying I'll go and stay there for a couple of weeks. No, I haven't got the energy for that. I'd have to mix it in with doing churches and stuff and, and not hiking. I'd have to have a mixture. Interesting wall there's been exposed. Look. Of the actual rampart. Not very good idea really, because that will help 
erosion by exposing it like that. But some people just can't help it, can they? Some people can't help it. They'll take a souvenir out of that. Oh, I feel refreshed even though it's strenuous climb up. It was worth it. I'm glad I've done it. I've still got another feature to find yet though. And that is what's called the cross. It's 25 foot high. I think it's a memorial to one of the Acklands again. I'm not sure, but I'm going to find it. It'll be over that way. I'm going to follow the directions for it when I get back to near the van. <sighs> right, over and out, everyone. Someone's just coming. <laughs>